Once again, Dallas, Texas plays host to bowling's richest payday. A field of six superstars will vie for $200,000. Masters champ Mike Scroggins. U.S. Open winner Tommy Jones. World Championship titleist Walter Ray Williams Jr. TOC winner Chris Barnes. As well as fan favorites Norm Duke. And Pete Weber will all try to strike it rich and roll their way to a Texas size paycheck. It's next. Entertainment in Louisville, Texas, near Dallas. ESPN brings you the second annual Motel 6 Roll the Riches. Six bowlers compete for a PBA record winner take all $200,000. Hello and welcome, bowling fans of the Dallas Metroplex. Dave Ryan, Randy Peterson, alongside. Huge treat for bowling fans, Randy, today. Six of the world's best under one roof with big money at stake. Yeah, a real exciting event for a number of reasons. Besides the money, what you get to see today is you get to see six different styles, six different ways to get your bowling ball to the pocket. You're going to have guys that hook it, guys that go straight. We have a southpaw. And one thing to keep in mind, we are bowling on our highest scoring pattern on the tour. It's called the cheetah pattern. And this season, only one man won on the cheetah pattern, and that man is Tommy Jones. We'll see if Tommy Jones can do it today. We have two rounds to try to get as far as the $200,000 first place prize. In the first round, six bowlers each have one shot. The low pin fall or ties for that round go to the elimination round match. We continue that process until just two are left, seated to the championship round semifinals. Then we've got four bowlers knocked out of the opening round. They'll split into two matches. Those are six frame matches. The perfect score nets a bowler a 180. The two winners from those matches move on to the championship round semifinals. When all the dust settles, four bowlers remain a chance at $200,000. Let's break down our field of Denny's PBA Tour Superstars. First, Walter Ray Williams Jr. won the World Championship in March in Indianapolis. His 41st title tying Earl Anthony's all-time record. And just when it looked like Dead Eye was dead in the water, what does he do? He makes three shows in a row to end the season and tie the late great Earl Anthony's record. Chris Barnes won the Motel 6 Roll the Riches a year ago, won 100,000, just coming off the Dexter TOC title himself. A back injury earlier in the season. Chris Barnes, just a couple of weeks ago, was having just a so-so year. He wins the Tournament of Champions and turns it into a great season. Norm Duke voted in by the fans on the PBA.com online voting process. A tour high, seven TV shows in one title. Yeah, he led the tour in just about every statistical category, including average and points. Finally gets his first win of the season in Taylor, Michigan. The bowler who beat Norm in the final of the USBC Masters in Milwaukee earlier this year, Mike Scroggins from Amarillo, Texas, won his first major of his career. Best season ever for Mike Scroggins as a professional, and you heard him say it over and over, what a dream season it was, over 200,000 in earnings. Tommy Jones from South Carolina, sure thing. Chris Schenkel, award winner for this year, four titles as the tour's MVP. Yeah, second year he's done that. Last season, four wins. This season, four wins. Gets his first major. And 100 grand. Pete Weber fell just short of winning the world championship title, lost to Walter Ray Williams Jr., but did take a championship in Hammond, Indiana, his 32nd of his career. Yeah, now he's on fourth on the all time list, finished second to Walter Ray at the world championships, but a really nice season for PDW. Let's get started with a great Walter Ray Williams Jr. from Ocala, Florida. 26 years. A brilliant Denny's PBA Tour star. And he's off to a good start with a strike. Get lucky once in a, while. a lot of different ways to play this cheetah pattern. You're going to see the guys using that friction to the right. Walter Ray, a little bit straighter player. He's going to get right on out there. Chris Barnes should be a little bit further left, throwing it to that spot. Can Barnes answer? You bet. Great pin action. And a strike for Chris. <laughs> Next up, Norm Duke, Claremont, Florida. Who do we know from Claremont, Florida? Randy Peterson, Jason, Jason Couch. Couch. Jason won twice on tour this year. Chicago and Fountain Valley. Norm, one win. And Taylor, Michigan. And a dream season. 
Good start for Normie. Well, we saw him play that line a lot this season. And I don't think there's anybody better at it. Speaking of dream seasons, what a season this guy had. Mike Scroggins wins the Masters, his first major, over $200,000 in earnings. Career best six TV appearances for Mike. Who time and time again described it to us throughout this season as a dream year. Tough to get any better. He's got all ten down. Nice. That could have easily been eight. <laughs> oh. Thanks for putting us last, you know. Still Pete Weber from just outside St. Louis, just PBA Hall ball. of Famer. And Tommy Jones to go. Just throw the ball. Four straight strikes. Can Pete continue the trend? That's high. Sure is. <laughs> Brooklyn crossing over. And he just gets. Somebody had to do it. Eight. Hard to believe a guy with 32 titles would go Brooklyn on this pattern. <laughs> PDW just did. What am I supposed to do if you got nervous? You're already in the Hall of Fame. I'm just trying to survive. <laughs> well, luckily, Tommy survived a day of golf today. Quite a bit of sunburn there. Tommy's got to use some sunblock next time. Forget the golf. Time for bowling. Looking for a strike. Light hit. Four pin. That's enough. First out. Couldn't, couldn't have got seven, right? So Pete Weber becomes the first bowler to get knocked from the opening round to the elimination round. One more loss, and he's out. Chris Barnes, Tommy Jones, our PBA stars all have a good start to this year's Roll the Riches. Welcome back, everyone, to Main Event Entertainment, Louisville, Texas, the Motel 6, Roll the Riches. The tour's official website at www.pba.com remains your best source for all the latest PBA news during the tour's off-season. Keep up to date with the results from the PBA Senior and Regional Tours, as well as details from the PBA Tour Trials, which will be contested May 31st to June 4th in Hammond, Indiana. All that and more at pba.com. Second frame here for Walter Ray. He struck the first time, only one bowler, knocked into the elimination round. That was Pete Weber in the first round. Walter Ray has all 10 down. Right now, the player's mindset is strike, and that's it. Remember, the player with the lowest count gets eliminated in this round, and so these guys are just thinking about the 1-3 pocket for Mike Scroggins, the 1-2 pocket being our only left-hander. Chris Barnes starts way right. At the end of the oil pattern, works into the pocket, gets some help on the five pin, and he's got a strike. You blowing on your finger? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I saw Linda's ball hit harder on your TV this morning. <laughs> a lot harder. A lot. Little fun there from Tommy Jones to Chris Barnes in a reference to Chris's wife, Linda, who is, by the way, an outstanding bowler. Great year for Norm. all them down. We saw Norm today before the show, Randy. All right. About three hours prior to the beginning of this event, he was very serious about this. He was locked in, focused. Yeah, he didn't go play golf today. No. Came here to win it, no doubt. Scroggins, second try. Has a strike. He may be a handful, too, being the only left-hander. up there. A lot of traffic on the right side of the lane. And five righties, so that could prove advantageous for Mike Scroggins. B. Weber, fifth in the order the first time through. He's been knocked to the elimination round. Now it's Tommy Jones. Anything less than a strike, TJ is out. Tommy. Ten pin, and TJ is, in fact, out of the he opening round. Practice. But this isn't practice, Tommy. So Pete Weber and Tommy Jones have been knocked into the elimination round. Back to the top of the order. Walter Ray. Three straight shows. Including the World Championship. Woodland Bowl, Indianapolis. Yeah! 
strike for Deadeye. His wife Paige Pennington not here. Walter flew from Florida. Motor home on the tour of them all year is back home now finally. Barnes another strike. Lucky. I kind of like that one. Sometimes being lucky is okay. Back to Norm Duke. And all year long told us how frustrating it was to make all those shows but not take home the trophy and the check as the winner until Taylor inside Detroit where he won his title. A little distraction there. He'll try it again. Like something fell out of the sky and hit the ground there. But Norm, he's a great champion, a true professional. He'll regroup. Instead of getting, instead of getting upset about it, Norm's having fun with it, and, and that's the right way to approach something like that. <laughs> that's good to see. The sky's falling. The sky's falling. Pete and Norm, long-time PBA rivals and friends. 55 times between them. Well, that's focus, Randy Peterson. After the distraction, having to start again, Norm does strike. He's got that angle working from out. Just throwing the heater into the dry part of the lane, and Mike Scroggins needs a strike here to advance. Anything else, he will be eliminated. And we'll be down to three. So can Scroggins. Strike for a third straight time. You bet. He's been perfect. Same four will move on now. And this is the fourth go around, and Walter Ray will lead us off. We're looking to stay perfect. This can't be easy, Randy. A lot of focus required. Anything but a strike. It's not what you want here. Bowling on our tour period isn't easy, especially at this level. And now you factor in two hundred thousand dollars. Yeah! You can see how these guys handle the pressure. That's why they are the greatest in our sport. Walter Ray, of course, is bowled for a hundred thousand. Never this much. Only. Bowler on our tour in history who knows what it's like to win 200 at one tournament, one event right here. Chris Barnes who stays perfect with a four straight strike. That ball was pretty deep in the pocket. It looked like it had knocked down 20 pins. Norm Duke looking to strike here to stay in the party. Needs a four-bagger. Stay in the hunt. Ten pin. Vicious ringing ten for Norm Duke. Now he needs some help from Mike Scroggins. Otherwise, he'll be taking a seat with Pete Weber and Tommy Jones. So Mike has a four-straight strike. Norm is sent to the elimination round. Tommy Jones, Pete Weber are already there. Then we'll only have three left. Walter Ray, Barnes, and Scroggins, if Mike can strike here. Wish he does. Wow, that was such a solid nine. Things kind of hot in here. And Norm is sent to the elimination round. Top of the order again here for Walter Ray. Can he do it for a fifth straight time? Through the nose, just eight pins now. Yeah, and just a bad shot. He needs to get it w further right than that. He gets going up the lane or left like that. There's no way it's going to hold back. It. So Chris Barnes with a fifth straight strike. In the two hole behind Walter Ray. We'll try to keep. His chances alive for a spot in the championship round. And he'll do just that. 
Perfect shot. That's called high flush air, and a lot of times the guy with that much power in a 16-pound bowling ball, you'll see them leave solid nines or solid seven nines. Not Chris Barnes. He gets all 10 to go back. Now Mike Scroggins with Duke, PDW. Tommy Jones already KO'd here from the opening round. Strike here. Bye-bye, Walter Ray. And there you have it. Scroggins and Barnes are through to the semifinals of this event. Now a seating shot to see where each will end up. High count. Gets the higher seat. How about 10? He's locked in here, Randy. Yeah, he's... Uh, he's He's perfect, has not missed yet. I know I Could be. <laughs> Neither has this guy. Five in a row for Scroggins. How about half a dozen? You bet. <laughs> the seating round continues here until someone doesn't strike. Chris Barnes does not want that to be him. He stays perfect. Yeah, that's a seven-bagger for those of you keeping track at home. And keep in mind that these two players know that they are six frames away from bowling for $200,000. Imagine what that would mean to Mike Scroggins. Career high earnings. His first major, six shows. However, he's off the mark. And that means Chris Barnes is the number one seed when it comes to the semifinals and the championship round. Let's check the matchups. Jones, Duke, Walter A. Williams Jr. and PDW. Semifinals. Scroggins and Barnes are through. Down to Randy with the bowler. Mike Scroggins, you're the only left-hander in the event. Is that an advantage or disadvantage? I think it's an advantage. I mean, uh, my shot's not going to change while they're bowling this next match. So, you know, we'll just see what happens. Thanks, Mike. Chris Barnes looking for another six-figure payday. You've been on fire as of late. How do you explain the success? Well, you know, how quickly things change. Uh, a few weeks ago, I couldn't break an egg. Now I'm on fire. Uh, you know, I have to thank Columbia 300 because they gave me a lot of support. I worked with Chad Murphy, kind of got my game straightened out a little bit. And, uh, you know, I'm throwing the best ball, so I got a chance today. Thanks, Chris. Mike. Well, Chris Barnes and Mike Scroggins have clinched a spot in the final four of the Motel 6 for all the riches, the championship round semifinals. The lefty and the righty on fire in Dallas. I would think that. The season's over, you look at the money. But uh, as I was renting my car this morning, I said to myself, look, it doesn't matter what they pay. Every time else, you know, you sit there and you look at the trophy, and it's not a big deal. It doesn't matter if it pays to $1,500 regional tournament or if it's a $100,000 US Open tournament. It doesn't make any difference. I'm willing to win that trophy. Here, it's all about the money. The, the winner's circle is what we dream about. I never dreamed as a kid, hey, I'm going to be on television, and I'm going to win $200,000 one day. I always said I was going to win the Tournament of Champions or Player of the Year or the average title or something other than money. You can keep the trophy, you can keep everything else, but just give me the money. I want to win something, whatever the heck it is. League Champion would be fine right now with me. It's more about winning now than ever. So we're set now for the elimination round semifinals. Norm Duke, Tommy Jones, Walter Ray Williams Jr., Pete Weber in the other. Scroggins and Barnes have advanced to the championship round already. Norm Duke, let's start with you. The season you had tremendous seven TV shows to lead the PBA tour, but this is an abbreviated TV format. How do you best approach it with this sort of format? Well, against these guys, you have to strike every time. 
Every time. I mean, I've had a pretty good, pretty good ratio going, and uh, shoot, I haven't even made it past number two out, so I, I know now. Don't miss. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Norm. Tommy Jones, great season for you as well. Won the major this year, but this is much different. Also, how do you approach it, this sort of TV format? Well, just like Norm said, you know, it's either strike or go home, and we got six frames. And judging by Norm's bar reaction, I better throw eight of the eight strikes here in these six frames. Thanks, Tommy. All right. All right, ready? Let's lead us to our ace hardware matchup for the semifinal. Well, it's the number one ranked player in the world, Norm Duke, taking on the number two ranked player in the world, Tommy Jones. Look at that money. Over a half a million dollars in earnings this season. Tommy Jones with the four titles, the one major. Norm Duke, seven shows. Finally got the monkey off his back with a win earlier in Taylor, Michigan. Norm Duke starts us off with a 10 pin. Six frame, abbreviated match format here. So obviously the bowlers want to get themselves to that 180, a perfect score. But Norm already is facing a spare here. Yeah, he was almost facing a pocket 710. And the one thing you can't do in six frames is afford an open frame. Norm had seven TV shows this year. Tommy Jones had six, including the major championship. Norm won in Taylor, Michigan for his 23rd career title. What a season for Tommy Jones. Appears to be the clear favorite for the Chris Schenkel Award as the player of the year. Would be the first of his career. My flush. Tommy Jones, fifth in average this season, number one in earnings with four wins and a major. And I think this pattern plays right into his wheelhouse because he can be aggressive on this pattern. A lot of friction. He, he likes to throw it hard. He likes to hook it. I think all of that adds up to allow Tommy Jones to really be in a comfort zone. Wow. Eight titles in his last two years, four this year, including the U.S. Open in New Jersey. Distracted down lane. He'll try again here. In our sport, shot routine again. In our sport, we don't have box. He made the Dexter Tournament of Champions show to finish out the regular season. One of the few times in the last two years he didn't win a TV show he was on. Wow. Has a seven pin. Just absolutely saws the rack right here and throws everything at the seven pin except the kitchen sink. Unfortunately, nothing comes into contact with it. There's a seven pin for Tommy from Simpsonville, South Carolina. Back to Norm. Great season. Won the Ace Hardware Championship just outside Detroit in March. Won the Harry Smith Award, top points. Leader on tour. George Young Award, high average as well. Just had the one title, but I think Norm would admit it's been a great year for him. Won her up a couple of times as well this year. But he was in the mix time and time again. To you and I, it's, it was a great year. To Norm Duke, just a good year. He said himself, Randy, not a great year, just a good year. I set goals to win majors. I didn't win majors. Therefore, only a good year. Wow! Laid in on number 10 for Norm Duke. He spent much of his childhood in the Fort Worth area very close to where we are here also some time Irving. Tommy Jones from South Carolina and the Texans Norm Duke head to head in this elimination round semi-final the winner survives the loser done for the year
Hello and a special thank you to Eric Studer, the Senior Vice President of Marketing for Motel 6, the title sponsor of this event here at Main Event Entertainment in Louisville, Texas, near Dallas. We're in the midst of the elimination round. We started our day with six bowlers. One will fall after this elimination match. Pete Weber, Walter A. Williams Jr. also face each other in the other elimination match. Scroggins and Barnes have advanced already to the championship round. And there's a strike for Tommy Jones. Coming off a dream season. And Randy, if anyone has understated about his success, it's TJ. Just a very mellow, quiet guy. Very unassuming. But he does the talking on TV. Look at those numbers. Yeah, well, he, he is very unassuming. He just lets his ball do the talking for him. I mean, when you throw it like Tommy Jones does, you don't need to say a whole lot. Before winning this year, best U.S. Open finish had been 11th. That was 2001. Won two titles to start the season. Has all 10 down here. The Japan Cup and Tulsa. Led the tour with four victories. Patrick Allen and Jason Couch had two apiece. Watch this. These pins don't know which direction to fall because they're just getting slapped silly. And he knows he needs a hit here to pull the match even. Abbreviated six-frame match here, folks. The winner is off to the championship round. Four bowlers survive the first round. 10 down for Norm, a perfect shot. And how many times have we seen Norm Duke throw the heater from the outside part of the lane? Remember this cheetah pattern, there's friction right, oil left. Norm likes to get right on top of the driest part of the lane and throw it as hard as he can without losing balance, with still making good shots and still hitting his target. But boy, does he really bring it from out. <clears throat> Uses an aggressive bowling ball and lets the dry take the ball to the pocket. Randy, what a year for this guy. You know, talk about numbers. Seven TV shows. The most since 2000 when he made seven as well. Career best was 91, where he had nine shows. And he knows this is special in his native Texas. He now lives in Claremont, Florida, near you, Randy, and Jason Couch, but he's a Texan through and through. Boy, and this is the one he wanted there. That was going to be a little light, throwing it that hard. His biggest concern was leaving a week 10, but got off his hand good. Got the six to go to the wall, take the 10 out. Right now, he's in the driver's seat. Jones made the final of this event a year ago. Lost to Chris Barnes. Cashed in $200,000. Has to hurry, it does with a one free pocket, all 10 down. Where Tommy Jones cuts the lead for Norm Duke to 10 pins. Tommy strikes out here in the sixth frame. He will shoot 160. That would force Norm to double in the last frame to take it away from Tommy. It's tough to keep score like this. I'm used to 10 frames. Yeah, only six here. feet to success in a six frame match here as he closes the gap whoops our field an incredible 114 combined titles and 20 majors all six of the bowlers who started off this competition have won at least one major title That is experience and an incredible accomplishment. Looks for five straight. Has number five in a row. Late trip on the 10 pin. Keeps the pressure on Duke. Well, he wanted this one, he needed this one, and now one more strike will force Norm Duke to get two. 
So this shot just as important as the last two that he's thrown in this frame. It's a hot day in Dallas, 85 degrees or so in this area. And warm inside. Jones tries to stay hot, looks for another. That's not a huge mistake. This time. What? Huge mistake. Now Norm Duke gets a strike nine spare. He wins by one. If Norm does not strike on this first ball, Tommy Jones will win sitting on the bench. It's not going to get it done. Spare's a winner. Anything less, we could have a tie. Norm goes eight spare, we have a tie. But right here, nice break, nice pin action. He's got that good angle. He's wishing for it. And he goes, all right, just one more, and I'm moving on. Norm's mom, Norm's brother here, making the trip cross state from East Texas, where he was born. That's what he needs. Nine spare. He'll be in the championship round. Nice shot. He loses by one. Unbelievable. Just a bad shot. He got it left off his hand immediately. Excuse me. He's going to lose by more than one. Even if he makes this, he can't win. It was left off his hand the whole way, right through the face. He pays the ultimate price. Oh. That's tough. There's the 467, and that'll do it. Tommy Jones Goodbye. takes the victory. 158, 156 in the abbreviated six frame match. Tommy is through to the championship round. He'll be one of the final four standing. When we return, to Louisville, Texas. Two of the all-time greats on the Denny's PBA Tour. Pete Webber, Walter Ray Williams Jr. head-to-head. -head. Only one bowler survives the matchup. It's the elimination round of the Denny's PBA Tour. Motel 6, Roll the Riches. The two greats head-to-head -head when we return. Apparently, I don't have a problem with bowling Pete on TV. <laughs> For whatever reason, I've got a good record against him. You know, that's, that's not an easy thing for anybody to do because he's a great bowler. But for whatever reason, he hasn't bowled the best games. He's gotten some bad breaks against me the last few matches. So it's, you know, I know one of these days if we ever to bowl on TV again, which is no guarantee because bowling anybody on TV is you know, kind of a rarity uh, because the matchups just don't happen very often. That if we do ever bowl again, you know, he's very likely to beat me. But I'm, you know, I fight tooth and nail for everything I can get out there, and I'm sure he does the same. Tommy Jones has knocked off Norm Duke in the elimination round semifinals. He'll take on Mike Scrogg into the championship round next. PDW, Walter Ray Williams Jr. for a shot to take on Chris Barnes, and the two legends joined now by Randy. Thanks, David. Pete, we'll start with you. The last time you squared off with Walter Ray Williams Jr. was at the World Championship. He got the better of you that day. How do you reverse the outcome today? Well, first of all, I need to learn how to throw a strike to beat Walter. Second of all, maybe if I drop a ball on his toe and he break it, he won't be able to bowl. So that's a good way to win. Great strategy, Pete. Thanks. Walter Ray, how would you best describe the feeling of finally tying Earl's record of 41 career titles? Uh, it was just unbelievable. I, I, I felt so awesome. I mean, it was like two or three days worth of high. It was unbelievable. It, I mean, to win a tournament's great. To win a world championship's great. To win it against one of the best bowlers in the world ever. I mean, that's just, I mean, it couldn't have been any better than that. Thank you, Walter Ray. All right, Randy, let's look into the Ace Hardware matchup. Pete and Walter Ray, very good seasons. We last saw Pete on TV in Grand Rapids, Michigan, as he went for a title there. Walter Ray Williams Jr., of course, tying Earl Anthony's record, the world championship at Woodland Bowl in Indianapolis. Between these two incredible 73 career titles, both Hall of Famers already on the Denny's PBA Tour.
We start with Pete. And he starts with a strike. I don't think he'll employ the drop you all bowling ball on the toe of Walter Ray here, but he does want to be in that 1-3 pocket, of course, in this abbreviated six-frame match and join Tommy Jones, Barnes, and Scroggins in the semifinals. Old Deadeye ties the record this year, earned a four-season exemption at the World Championship. So as he said, post-match, after beating Pete in Indy in the final, now I've got four more years to try to overcome Earl's record. Ball 10 down for Walter Ray. Just an amazing guy. Been able to be this good for so long. No matter what the lane conditions were like, no matter what the format was like, the changing of equipment going from urethane to reactive resin to particle bowling balls just doesn't matter. Most TV appearances, you saw that. Most TV wins. Yeah. All 10 down for him here. Yeah. 133. Yeah. And 112 TV record all time. And 41 of 39 in title matches. Getting the fans involved a bit here, too, in Louisville. <laughs> Good to see Walter Ray have some fun. Each he and Pete, of course, have won $100,000 by winning majors. Pete has done it twice, $100,000 oh. for a first place prize. Didn't like that one at all. Crossing over, and it's a three-pit. Pete, throw the ball. Jeez. Never got it far enough right. Looked like he turned him over there and don't even throw it there. Looked like he turned a little bit early, which kept the ball from feeding far enough to the right. Petey's a big hook guy, so he's got to give the ball more room to the All right. That rim. <laughs> Needs All that rim over there. Head to head on TV. Look at that. Title matches 4 0, including the Worlds this year in Indy. Seven majors for each compiled. That is one shy of Earl Anthony's all-time record of eight. Pete could have tied it this year at the World Championship. He was very disappointed, as he told us, after losing to Walter Ray, his longtime rival. Much better shot, all 10 down for Pete. Yeah, and about an arrow right of the last shot. Like I was saying, <laughs> he needs to give the ball more room to the right. He's a hook guy. Walter Ray can go straighter. Time out in Louisville. Who will stand the tallest among these two incredible superstars on the Denny's PBA Tour? Is it Walt Ray or Pete? We'll find out the conclusion next. We're coming to you from the Dallas Metroplex, Louisville, Texas. Motel 6, roll the riches, rolls on. And these two PBA greats have combined seven majors each, all chasing Earl Anthony's all-time record of eight. Mike Colby in his great career had six as well. This year, each... Pete and Walter Ray had three TV shows. And Walter Ray, Akron, Taylor, Michigan, and the Worlds. Of course, he won there in Indy. For PDW, Hammond, Indiana, where he won the World Championship in Grand Rapids the very next week. Tour leader Norm Duke had seven TV appearances. Second match, Walter Ray by 10. Expands the lead to 20. Walter Ray, perfect through three, three frames, and, and I found it interesting when he told me that he absolutely hates this oil pattern. He said he hates it. That's a strong word. But he did win on this pattern 04-05 season. Had a good year with money as well. Really helped, of course, with $100,000 from the World on, Championship in Indy. Oh, and it's some late help. All 10 down. And thanks from Walter Ray. <laughs> he stays perfect. If he were to win today, of Never course. Failed. And take this event. Take home $200,000. Would not count as a PBA title or toward his PBA winnings from this season. But it's real money, all right. Highest payout. Denny's PBA Tour history. Back to Pete. Starts from in, and has 10 down. Now when he got farther right, got it in the right spot, and right now Petey's thinking, I've got to do this the rest of the game to have a chance. 
See that ball way out to the right, hits the friction spots, hooks back with that rotation. Pete puts on it, and he looks slightly amused. But guys, right before the competition, we spoke with him today here in Texas. Seemed very relaxed. And Pete said, once the red light goes on, I'm out there in front of the fans. It'll get intense. Look at that one right through the nose, way high. He didn't like it at all. Three, six up, and things looking very good for Walter Ray to make the final four. Hand, can you, Pete? Well, you heard him. He grabbed this one. It doesn't push to the right and goes high again. Just can't let it off your hand. Yeah. Oh, why can't you let it off your hand? Doesn't like the release at all. Just grabbing it. When he grabs it, it doesn't push to the right. He's talking about letting it off his hand. Just let it go. This guy lets it go. He sure does. There's a 10 pin for Walter Ray. Had started with the first four in a row. That's all right, because all he needs is a spare here and a spare in the 10th frame, and he's going to advance. Or the 6th frame. The 6th frame. <laughs> That's right. Well, there's three of them. Our there, equivalent like the to 6 right. at 10. Yeah, you call it the 6th frame, but there's actually eight shots being thrown. That's right. Anyway, he needs a mark in the sixth frame, and he'll beat Pete. Well, he's owned him, as we saw, head-to-head -head in finals 4-0, and he's about to take care of Pete again. Unless we have an open on this frame, uh, this pattern as well, that would be unusual. Walter Ray tries to put him away. He has all 10 down. The messenger across the deck takes care of Pete. And Walter has won this match. He'll advance to the championship round semifinals to face Chris Barnes. He's thrown a lot of strikes throughout his career, a lot of different strikes. Came in light. A couple of frames go on the right lane. Shreds the rack, gets the messenger on the left lane. And, oh, I was going to get a little mixer there. <laughs> it doesn't matter, Petey says. 2-5 up, but it won't matter because Walter Ray is off to the championship round. Wow. That wow. A six-frame match. <laughs> He'll take on Chris Barnes as he survives this matchup of two incredible Denny's PBA Tour superstars. Really big deal now. It's always easy to pry it off your hand when it doesn't matter. Pete's got a busy summer ahead. Uh, yeah, he said, golf, golf, and more golf. <laughs> His wife, Tracy, is here, of course. They just celebrated their 10th anniversary recently. That's what he has done, just throw six different bowling balls. Now he's got it figured out. He can play golf any day in the summer except for Mondays. That's uh, reserved for the list of things she wants him to do. And All right, well, then good luck, man. Maybe Thanks dinner long, and a movie man. together as well. Walter Ray can flex those muscles for good reason. A 41-time titleist. Knocks out Pete Weber. Second elimination match. He's off to the championship round semis. PBA Tour returning to the Dallas area for the 39th time, 103rd time overall in the great state of Texas. Walter Ray signed for his loyal fans. Norm Duke, Chris Barnes have won titles in this state, each competing today in the Motel 6 World of Riches just outside Dallas. In the opening round, each bowler trying to get themselves a spot in the championship round semifinals. Both Mike Scroggins and Chris Barnes did survive and earned a bye. In match number one, Tommy Jones took on Norm Duke. This is the first elimination round match, a six-frame matchup. In the end, Tommy Jones prevails. He advances to take on Mike Scroggins. Then in a battle of two PBA Hall of Famers, Walter Ray Williams Jr. taking on Norm Duke. 
Walter Ray, the survivor. He'll take on Chris Barnes next. So the two to make the next round, joined now by Randy. Thanks, Dave. Tommy Jones, what went through your mind when the great Norm Duke gets up in the final frame to beat you and he splits? Well, I think I'm still in a little disbelief about what happened there, but uh, it's the nature of the beast, the short format. you got to take advantage of those breaks and uh, see if I can capitalize on that and make it $200,000. Thanks, Tommy. Walter Ray, you, you beat down Mr. Weber again. What's the secret? I don't know. I wish I knew because I'd do it for everybody. <laughs> That's it? Well, I mean, he bowled a great game. Uh, technically, he had one more strike than I did. Other than that, everything was equal. But uh, I just had my strikes in the right place. Uh, Pete's a great bowler. He gave me a couple opportunities there, uh, fortunately. And you got to take him and run with him. I was looking for the secret. Thanks, Walter Ray. Tommy Jones, congratulations. Well, Randy, you're just not going to get it. The championship round is coming up on ESPN. The final four in this Motel 6 Roll to Riches. Winner take all, $200,000 format from here in Louisville. That's coming your way on ESPN. So that'll do it. For the main event entertainment center just outside Dallas, Texas. For the entire crew and Randy Peterson, it's Dave Ryan saying so long. It's been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. As we return to Big D and the Denny's PBA Tour Motel 6 Roll the Riches, the semifinals are remaining. Yeah! Masters champ Mike Scroggins oh, yeah. will take on U.S. Open winner Tommy Jones. Yeah. That's followed by TOC champ Chris Barnes against world champion Deadeye Walter Ray Williams Jr. to see who advanced to the race to six strikes worth $200,000. It's all next. Entertainment Center, Louisville, Texas, near Dallas. ESPN proudly presents the Denny's PBA Tour Motel 6 Roll the Riches. We started this event with six bowlers. Only one will stand the tallest and take home a record $200,000. Welcome, everyone, to Suburban Dallas. Dave Ryan, as usual, Randy Peterson alongside. Glad you could join us. Well, two Texans, Mike Scroggins and Chris Barnes, who won this event a year ago, able to get through the opening round unscathed. They're off to the championship round. But for two PBA superstars, a little more difficult path. That's part of our Geico Championship recap. And isn't it fitting that the four players left standing are four major championship winners from this season? In match number one, Tommy Jones took on Norm Duke. Tommy Jones displayed all of his skill and power as he was just slapping pin silly. Norm Duke gets up in the final frame needing a strike and nine to advance and disaster. He loses by two, Tommy Jones advances. And in match number two, the greatest bowler to ever throw a bowling ball down the lane, Walter Ray Williams Jr. takes on longtime rival Pete Weber. Dead eye takes dead aim and he advances to face Chris Barnes. All right, Randy, let's check in with the brackets. Mike Scroggins won the Masters this year, his first major in Milwaukee. Tommy Jones took home the U.S. Open, his first major title. Chris Barnes, his second ever major. Recent win at the TOC in Connecticut. Walter A. Williams Jr., of course, won the Worlds this year to tie Earl Anthony's all-time title record. Our format in this event, two champs from the elimination round face two opening round winners. Six frame matches, of course, the max score, if you're perfect, is 180. The two victors move on to the title match, and then it's a race to six strikes, and is that ever exciting? The bowlers will alternate shots with both taking the same amount of shots. The first player to roll six wins $200,000. Chris Barnes won it a year ago here in suburban Dallas. Let's go back to Randy. Mike Scroggins, you know what kind of pressure is involved in winning $100,000, but now you're bowling for $200,000. Describe the pressure. Well, you know, I'm just uh, glad to be here, and really it's no pressure on me. I'm the underdog in all this, so I'm just going to go out and try to strike as much as any of these guys did. Thanks, Mike. Tommy Jones, advantage or disadvantage taking on the southpaw? Well, I don't think it's an advantage or a disadvantage. Scroggins is a great bowler, and I know what I have to do, and, you know, it's going to take a, you know, a good six frames for me to come out on top. Thanks, Tommy. Hey, Tommy Jones got a little sun here in Dallas. A little golfing, huh? No doubt about that. Here's the Ace Hardware matchup. Jones and Scroggins head-to-head. -head. Each had brilliant seasons tied for 
second place on the Denny's PBA Tour in TV appearances. Norm Duke led the way with seven. TJ, Tommy Jones, the strong favorite to win Player of the Year. From South Carolina, starts off his day. Perfectly. Scroggins, we saw in the Ace Hardware matchup, an incredible season of his own from Amarillo. His family has made the trip here. It's about a five-hour drive or so. Wife Melanie, children Ross, who's nine, Will seven, little Maggie two and a half. They have all made the trip. Eddie and Kay, Mike's parents, are here too. We have not seen much of Mike on TV in person on the Denny's PBA tour, but yeah, they've made the journey from Amarillo to root on the Texan. There's one thing that Mike Scroggins knows how to do in that strike. In 1999-2000, he averaged 256 in league for 78 games, 15 800s. 800s for a three-game series. Wow. Career best six TV appearances this year. They knocked off Norm Duke, who had been the top seed, step letter format at the USBC Masters in Milwaukee. And two amateurs on that show. Scroggins able to take it home. Yeah. Late bloomer as far as Denny's PBA Tour stars go, but Scroggins certainly stood out all year with six shows, very consistent on all patterns, Randy. Well, yeah, and what you look for when Mike Scroggins is on television is whether or not he has down lane ball reaction. In other words, if he can get his ball to start hooking at about 50 feet and starting to go right, he's going to bowl well. When the oil carries down, he has a little bit of trouble because he's not a big hook player. He's a down and in player. He likes dry back ends. Way high. Just a six pin count. God bless the Tommy. Back off. Where Tommy Jones Back didn't like off. it at all. God. Well, we see it again. You know, there's friction to the right, oil left. You got to get the ball to the right a little bit further down the lane than Tommy did there because of the fact that he hooks it. And a short match. That really opens the door for Scroggins. We start off with two strikes and pin count can really hurt Tommy Jones here. Does cover nicely for the mark, but just got six for the first ball. And we'll see how that plays out at the end of this six frame match. And right now, his mindset is, I can't miss again. Some rosin in the thumb hole. Has a unique way of putting his hand in the ball. Screws his thumb in first, then puts his fingers in last. Normally, we do it the other way around. You see a good look right there. As the traditional wrist tape, been with him the last few years. Doesn't bowl without it. Not really for protection, not really for support, but for luck. That's off too, light hit. 2 4 10 for Tommy. And he's lost his look, Randy. Well, he thought this was pretty good. He gets it to the spot, and the ball just never hooks off of it. Just goes a pinch further down the lane than he wanted. And this could spell disaster for Tommy Jones. Great. Some power. Does convert the split, but again, it's about pin count here. And Scroggins so far is perfect in a six frame match. He has the first two strikes. The door's wide open for Mike Scroggins. Well, that gives him some life, but with two strikes here in the third and fourth, Mike Scroggins could put him away. We're midway through this semifinal. Each player trying to take home a PBA Tour record. $200,000 and a thrown Chris Barnes as the champion of this event. Will it be Scroggins or Jones? We'll find out next. For semifinal championship round, Motel 6 roll the riches. One bowler will take home a PBA Tour record $200,000 from here in suburban Dallas. Dave Ryan, Randy Peters, our entire crew with you. Great start for Scroggins. Struck in the first two abbreviated six-frame matches. Tommy Jones knows he's in a hole, down 13. 
Now to the commercial break. How will Scroggins respond? Will he take command? No. High shot. And a split. Right out of the commercial. That way. Just not a good shot. He threw it poorly. Got it in a little bit. A little slower. And you heard him say, just a little slower. And that ball cuts right through the heart. You don't see this leave a lot here, Randy. Two, four, six, ten. A lot of pins to cover. Won't get the six. Barely. Another shrapnel. And an open frame. And just like that, he relinquishes the lead. Advantage Jones. Brand new life for TJ. He's got to be thinking, wow. What a relief. Nine lives of TJ the Cat. He seems to have that. This year's Dexter Tournament of Champions in Connecticut, round of 16. Danny Wiseman. Twice flagged 10 pins in a match that gave TJ new life twice and helped him win it. Let's see how Tommy Jones responds to that gift. Stand back for Tommy Jones after the Scroggins open frame. Four titles this year, major. First in earnings, second in points behind Norm Duke. Three hundred one thousand career best for Jones. It's a lot of wheat. A lot of diapers for baby Ella Claire back home. And his wife Kristen just had the new house. Moved into it after it was built. And he's trying to win 200,000 more here today. Leaves a 10. Well, his lead could go away now with the spare here. Mike Scroggins can get up in the fifth and sixth frame and win this thing. A little slippery on the approach. Some of the players told us before the match today. And it, oh. Unlike some of the tacky surfaces you have, where it's sticky, a little bit slick. Tommy, a baseball player growing up in South Carolina, he says, I'm safe. Much different strategy and thought process for the bowlers, Randy, because of the six-frame match? Absolutely. I, I mean, it's like... You know, Mike Scroggins does what he does in the third frame. He splits open frame. Now he's thinking, well, Tommy Jones is now going to strike out. But right now, Mike Scroggins can take the lead with a strike right here in the fifth. It's a sprint. Back and forth we go. Mike earned the multi-season exemption after winning the Masters this year. Says he'll go a couple more years on tour and then maybe join his twin brother, Mark, a former... PBA bowler himself running a pro shop in Amarillo. And get off the road. He said he recently missed his son Ross throw a no hitter in a little league game. He said, I just can't do that too much more despite the great season. Family comes first. Come on, carry. Yeah, it sure did, Mike. And now he just needs good count to win. Good count right here. Doesn't matter what Tommy Jones does in the sixth frame or the final frame. Good count. And he will move on to bowl for $200,000. Against the winner of Walter A. Williams Jr. and Chris Barnes in the other semifinal. A lone lefty. Last year in this show, Patrick Allen represented winning the world's look out though almost had the big four just the 610 now more than enough even if he misses it he'll shoot 130 the best Tommy Jones can shoot is 127 and that 
fifth frame. Tommy needed a strike is going to be his undoing. Threw a great shot and got tapped. And the Texan from Amarillo <laughs> is through. <laughs> yeah! Time for a high five from his boys. Serve it, deserve it. Ross and Will congratulate that on a big win. Mike Stragas has advanced to the race to six strikes. Who will he take on? Either Walter Ray Williams Jr. or defending champ, Chris Barnes. We'll start with Walter Ray. 41 career titles, tying Earl Anthony's record this year. Number one all-time TV appearances, TV wins. How does all that prior experience help you in this event? Well, these guys are all great players, so it kind of helps to be comfortable bowling on TV, but I've never bowled for $200,000. So hopefully I don't get too shaky out there and uh, can still throw quality shots. Thanks, Walter Ray. Chris, you won it all last year. Does that help you this year? Well, last year's a long time ago. I think probably what helps me most is just uh, being a little bit on the hot list right now. And, and uh, you know, that big check last week kind of frees up the swing. So uh, I'm just going to try and ride the wave and uh, see what happens today. Thanks, Chris. Good luck. Thanks. That big check, $100,000. Multi-season exemption for winning the Dexter Tournament of Champions. Randy leads us to the Ace Hardware matchup. These two great PBA stars. Yeah, and they, and they really turned two so-so years around by winning two majors. Walter Wright, 41 career titles. Chris Barnes just won his second major this season. But keep one thing in mind, Chris Barnes is the only player that knows what it's like to win $200,000. Forty-one titles, twenty-six years on the Denny's PBA Tour. Randy's called him the all-time greatest bowler. Uh, it's tough to argue. Walter Ray has never bowled though for two hundred thousand on one show. It starts right now for him. Looks a little high. He won't get the help. On the six pin. Oh, it was a little high. Wow. And he's lucky he doesn't split here. See, Walter Ray likes to go down and in straight. It's his A game. First and last majors coming for Walter Ray. Woodland Bowl in Indianapolis. Deadeye takes care of the single pin spare conversion, which he does nearly flawlessly on the regular Denny's PBA Tour. His opponent today, the defending champ. Seventh title, Chris Tolles today, a real feather in his cap. His wife, Linda, a great bowler in her own right. And his twins in the bowling center. He's oh. off to a good start. And that's what Chris Barnes can do that Walter A. Williams Jr. can't do as well. Chris can get that's in and- line. We get that one, we'll be all right. Chris can really get in and bang on it and make that ball turn the corner because of his high rev rate and a heavy, heavy roll. Walter Ray still can do that, just not as effectively. This guy has come through with the big money on the line. All 10 down there. We saw last year he won the Motel 6 for all the riches for 200000 he won the U.S. Open for 100,000 last year in New Jersey. This year, the Dexter Tournament of Champions, another 100,000. Good start. Good start is right, Chris. So, with six figures on the line, he's done pretty well. It's like the human ATM machine. Back to Walter Ray. Ten pin. Wow. You heard Barnes say that was the tricky lane. Unfortunately for Walter Ray, he's got to finish on that lane. But it, but you know what? It, maybe it's tricky for Chris. Maybe not for Walter Ray, but he did leave a week 10, and that's not a real good sign. Takes care of the 10 pin. Normally he and his wife, Paige Pennington, drive their motor home from site to site. But because the regular season is over, they went and put that down in Ocala, Florida. Paige not here, so Walter Ray flew into Dallas on his own. Ball change. Same bowling ball, but different drilling and looks like a little bit more surface. Oh, he's hooking it now. Are you kidding me? Wow, eight pin. 
I told you, he can do it. He can get in and hook it. Watch this. He makes a move, gets the ball that's a little bit stronger. He moves in where Barnes is, hooks it off the corner. Ball is perfect. Leaves a solid eight. Old Dead Eye, the horseshoe pitching champ, takes care of the single pin conversion again. But he's down by 12 pins. To the defending champ, Chris Barnes, who is only eight miles from his home. He lives in Flower Mound. We're coming here from Louisville in the Dallas Metroplex. Barnes looking good. More of the semifinal match with Walter Ray next. Welcome back, everyone. Main event entertainment, Louisville, Texas, outside Dallas. We resume with Chris Barnes. What a matchup. Head to head with a great Walter Ray Williams Jr. Hook a lot. It did hook a lot, Chris. He says his bowling game and physical wow. well being can really go downhill if he doesn't bowl a lot in the offseason. Well, he got this one to the right, and the late, great Billy Waylu, who used to be the color commentator way back in the day, used to say, trust is a must or your game is a bust. Well, he trusted that one. How about Barnes? Picture perfect. Well, 11 for 11. You better believe it. He is locked in. And Walter Ray is in serious, serious trouble. 32 pin lead all of a sudden. It's strike or bust here for Walter Ray in a six frame match. There is no room for error at all. Ringington. Well, all but over. Chris Barnes needs to fill marks in the fifth and sixth frame and Walter Ray will be eliminated. He made the move, he went, he went with his gut, he made the adjustment, moved in, and all he has to show for it is four nine spares in a row. Still a season to remember for Walter Ray, tying Earl Anthony's all-time title record in Indianapolis against Pete Weber, his longtime rival, fellow PBA Hall of Famer. An incredible moment. Ah! That's the strike you've been waiting for. And the facetious celebration there for Walter Ray. It says he'll be busy in the offseason, too, not only with the horseshoe pitching competition, but a tribute to Dick Weber in St. Louis. Some regionals, plenty of... Public appearances for Walter Ray. He'll stay active. Chris Barnes just plain old stay hot here, Randy. He continues to scorch the lanes here in Dallas. And just like we saw when he won the Tournament of Champions, he made the right decision on how to play the lanes with the right bowling ball. And right now, he's perfect after five. Himself a pocket 710 instead just a 10 pin ends a great streak for Chris. He will advance to face Mike Scroggins. And then it's a race to six strikes. First ball to get there takes home the big money. Winner take all $200,000. Walter Ray was the all-time leader in earnings in PBA history. Three and a half billion. Wow. In his tremendous career. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Walter. Probably find a format we can beat you on TV on, I guess. Doesn't be short enough. Not easy, but Chris Barnes does take care of Walter A. Williams Jr. That means the final two set to go. Mike Scroggins, Chris Barnes, head-to-head, -head, two Texans, next. Of our six bowlers to start this event here in suburban Dallas, Norm Duke, Chris Barnes have won titles in the Dallas area. Chris Barnes won it back in 2003. Mike Scroggins, Chris Barnes ready to race for six strikes after Barnes, Scroggins advancing through the semifinals. Let's go to Randy now with the finalists. Thanks, Dave. 
Mike Scroggins, the format changes now. It's all about strikes. How does your strategy change? Uh, it really doesn't. Just uh, I got to outstrike Chris, and you know that's going to be a tough, tough battle to do it. So I'm just going to go out there and try my best. Thanks, Mike. Chris, defending champ, you're in the same position this year than you were last. Does it feel any different? Well, I don't know if you ever get used to being in a position to bowl for $200,000. So, uh, you know, it's a lot of fun. Uh, we had a great ride here the last three or four tournaments, and uh, just going to ride the wave and uh, see what happens. Um, Mike's been bowling great, so it may take some breaks. We'll see what we'll see how we get, how we do. Thanks, Chris. Dave Ryan, it's an all Texas shootout. We'll see whose six shooter is loaded. Battle of Lone Star State here, Randy. Ace Hardware matchup. Seventh title. Recently, the Dexter Tournament of Champions. And the third and only title this year. The season for Mike Scroggins, of course, was the Masters in Milwaukee. Two of 14 bowlers of our 21 events to win just one title all year long. Tommy Jones with his four wins. Two each for Patrick Allen and Jason Couch, the only other multi-title winners. The numbers for Mike Scroggins, nearly perfect in the opening round. All but two strikes in the semifinal victory. This is the race to six. First bowler to get there takes home $200,000. Will be the defending champ, Chris Barnes. Or lone southpaw from Amarillo. Texan Mike Scroggins. Great start. Everyone. <laughs> The countdown begins. Here go, Barnes knocked off Tommy Jones with six straight strikes. Jones started the match, the race is six strikes with a nine count. Uh, help. Won't happen this year for Barnes. There's a seven pin. A year ago, <laughs> Barnes struck after the nine count for Jones, and Jones had a seven count. Barnes just rifled through to get his six in a row. This year, if he's going to win it, Randy, a different path to this title. Well, right there, he just got a pretty bad break, leaving a stone seven when he hit the pocket. No need to shoot a spare. Again, it's all about strikes. And right now, advantage Mike Scroggins. With his second shot, can he take a 2-0 lead? Not at all. Strange ball reaction. Shoot that. <laughs> Through the one-two pocket. No need to shoot it. A little soft, looked like. You know, do just that. Using two different bowling balls. Different ball in the left lane, different ball in the right lane. Last year in this event, Chris Barnes won the PBA Tour record $200,000. There's a chance here for either Barnes or Scroggins to take home the big money again. Inside. Really could be life-altering cash. What would each do with that kind of money in hand? I might think about retiring, actually, yeah. Uh, in a couple of years, you know, I'm not getting any younger, that's for sure. And uh, I'd definitely think about retiring and buying a business. You know, it's it's hard to even think about. It's more money than I ever thought I would ever make bowling. Uh, it's just something I love to do and, and followed that passion out on tour. And uh, it's turned into something that not only can make a little bit of a living at, but uh, uh, awfully comfortable at the same time now. So uh, uh, I'm just kind of living the dream, and uh, we'll use the money as it, as it needs to be used. Life-altering money, that's for sure. Both players know what that's like. They both won a tournament. They paid $100,000 for first, but not a lot of people know about winning 200 grand. The winner that wins this event will make $300,000 in two events. No strike there for Scroggins, six pin. Right now, Mike Scroggins is getting a lot more back end reaction than he wants. The last two shots go high. Scroggins had a chance for a 2-0 lead here, Randy. Now, Barnes can go up. Bringing 10. He won't get to number two yet. Two pretty good shots on this left lane. Oh, man. Even though the first one. Change or not. 
Even though the first one went a little high, but it still could have struck. Chris Barnes could have easily had three already. Mike Scroggins thinking about ball change, and honestly, not a good time to be thinking about something like that. Although, if you're going to do it, do it now and be confident in a change. Career type year for Scroggins, the major, the six TV shows. Can he cap it off with a roll to Rich's time? There's a seven pin, ball and change. we're still tied at one. Need a ball change. Who's going to break through? Can anyone take the advantage here? This is very much unlike last year's final when Barnes ran away with it. Yeah, Chris just got up and just went bang, 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 and it was done. So much pressure. And yet, so different from a standard Danny's PBA Tour event. High shot, 6-10, no strike. Still at 1-1 one. One is our score. <laughs> Three. That was just a bad shot. It was left the whole way. And right now, you can see what pressure is all about. Guys, That you have no idea what it's like to bowl for this kind of money. I mean, it's life-changing. Mike Scroggins has talked about his dream time year. to get the shoe paint off that one. Talked about his dream year. He's made over two hundred thousand dollars this year. I mean, could you imagine adding another two hundred grand to that total? Almost a half a million dollars for a professional baller. It's a scary number. Scary thought. Double wood there will not have a second strike. We asked Mike, well, what are you going to do with the two hundred thousand if you win it? And he sort his jaw sort of dropped open. He said, I'm not really sure. That's, that is a ton of money. Well, there's your ball change, and that didn't work. So now Chris Barnes is still looking to take advantage of the fact that Mike Scroggins Tell is not striking. Tell pot game. Scroggins third in the money list this year. Barnes fifth at 174,700. 100 of which came, of course, by winning the Dexter Tournament of Champions. There's all 10 down in the pit for Chris Barnes. Yeah. Give yourself a little pat on the shoulder there. It's two to one. And if Mike Scroggins was feeling pressure before, he's really going to feel it now. Pride went off. That's Scroggins. Over 800,000 career dollars won on tour so far. He win 200,000 here. Won't get his second strike. And right now he's trapped. One ball hooks too much, the other one doesn't hook enough. And it couldn't have happened at a worse time. The good news for Mike, he's only down by one strike here. Barnes hasn't run away with it. The bad news, can he figure out the proper ball reaction? Uh, here we go. Here we go. This is big here. Halfway home with a strike here. On a six shot. Yes. Oh, he liked it. And he takes a 3 1 lead in the race to six strikes. When we return, one of the two balls from here in Texas. Chris Barnes and Mike Scroggins takes home a tour record $200,000. Which will be the lefty or the righty? We'll find out next. It takes some luck. I got awfully fortunate. Ironically, you know, Jaros let me through last year with a 7-9. A to Otherwise, I'd have been the first person eliminated in the shootout last year. I got seven or eight extra shots. I got pretty comfortable with what was going on with the pair and had a chance to get a little bit of confidence in it. You know, for all the travails I've had on TV, there's been a couple of terms that worked out OK for me in the last 16, 18 months. late great Dick Weber, the only multi-title winner here in the Dallas area in regular Denny's PBA Tour events. Well, Chris Barnes has a chance to repeat and win a second Motel 6 Roll the Riches. The special event on the Denny's PBA Tour, chance to win $200,000. He's halfway there. First to get the six strikes, takes it. Scroggins in a huge hole, just one for six so far. The time is now. For the lefty from Amarillo. Harry. Yeah! Great hit. 
on the eight pin. He'll gladly take it. It's 3-2. Boy, he really needed that. Last thing he needed to see was a stone eight standing up. Right now, he'll give Chris Barnes something to think about. Nice pin action. And that's exactly what he needed to get back in the match. We have Buku movement. Racked it. Yeah, a little some movement to his left there. And he wants a chance to think this over. This is a huge shot. With a chance to take a 4-2 lead. Two strikes from $200,000. Yeah. He looks confident. won't get that fourth strike and the door opens again for Mike Scroggins. He didn't like that upon release at all. Can't get his third strike. And he's trying to figure it out, Randy, what's going on? Pretty good. Light high, light high. He's got the left lane figured out, but hasn't figured out the right lane yet. He's made a ball change. And right now, if you're Chris Barnes, you've got to be pretty loose knowing that your opponent is struggling on one of the two lanes. Looks for number four. That's high. Wow. And just can't take advantage of Mike Scroggins not being able to strike. Chris Barnes goes light, left lane, high the right lane. One shot looked fast, the other, one, the other shot looked slow. Very interesting to me to see how each responds. The pressure for Barnes, we saw a little frustration. If you're Mike Scroggins right now, what's your game plan? Well, he's got this lane. I think he's pretty well lined up on the left lane, but he's got to dig down deep the next time he's on the right lane, make a change, and go with it. For the equalizer, yeah. it does carry Mike. Back in business now, all he's got to yeah. do is figure out how to strike on that right lane. All tied at three of the first of six, takes home 200 grand. I think if he takes that same ball on the left lane, or excuse me, on the right lane, and moves a little bit left and just tightens up his angle a little bit, he'll be fine. Chris Barnes, on the other hand, has now let Mike Scroggins back in. Let's see the kind of shot he makes here after the last two shots being very marginal. There's late help on number 10, and he takes the lead. Two strikes from $200,000. He's now using the same ball in both lanes, Dave. He got that one a little bit further right. And that one made the turn. Did not hesitate. Fresh off a 234-227 win over Steve Jarris, the final of the Dexter Tournament of Champions in Mohegan Sun in Connecticut. And Scroggins tie him up on this lane. Yeah. Yes, he can. All tied. And a side relief for the lefty. They finally got it to hook up on that right lane. Randy, remember Barnes in the final of TOC against Steve Jarris, an early split. What happened then? Reeled off six straight strikes. He needs six strikes here total to win another huge pot. Goes for number five. Has it! He's one away. <laughs> He'll have a chance to defend his title and win 200000 the next time he steps up. Trusted this one to the right, which is what you have to do on this pattern, the cheetah pattern with the friction right. He trusted it to the dry and carried all 10. Wife Linda nearby.
So Groggins tries to apply the pressure. Looks for his fifth. Yeah, we'll have it. But it's up to Chris Barnes. One more strike. And he wins a PBA Tour record 200,000 for a second straight year. Just off winning 100,000 at the Dexter Tournament of Champions. This is where you shut off all the conscious thinking. Everything has to be done subconscious right now. This next shot, there can't be any thought process involved at all. You stand up there, you look at your target, and you go without thinking. Ryan Troy, the twins. Mommy says, boys, quiet, big shot for dad here. All right, that's the front part. Scroggins has got life now. If he strikes on the next ball and Chris Barnes doesn't, Mike Scroggins wins. <laughs> Let's see what kind of shot Mike Scroggins can come up with. Maybe not his greatest shot, but he got it to the pocket, and nine times out of ten, he's going to strike on that ball. Hey, Scroggins, how many do we get? Thank you. <laughs> that was my second. All right. <laughs> what an opportunity here for Scroggins. A strike here will force Barnes to strike. Otherwise, Mike Scroggins is the champ. Seven pin. Now it goes the other way. Chris Barnes, another chance. Second chance at winning $200,000. Chris strikes on this ball. It's over. He wins. Unbelievable pressure for these two great Denny's PBA Tour stars. One more strike. And he's got it. Mike Scroggins wants another shot. We'll see if Chris Barnes gives it to him. I guess it all evens out sometimes. That was the luckiest shot I've ever had in my life right there. Ah. Hey, I love you guys. Ryan and Troy will certainly enjoy looking back at this moment with Dad. Was that one? Yeah, if you want that. Yeah! And wife right, Linda on, will Thanks, take buddy. the twins for now because Dad has got to pick up the huge check. 200,000 Randy on this shot. This ball had no chance until it got left of the head pin. And like Chris Bard said, just a colossal break for him. A $200,000 Brooklyn strike. Linda is a very talented bowler herself, and she knows just how lucky her husband got there with a high shot that crosses over and goes Brooklyn. Mike Scroggins cannot believe what he just saw. I'm sorry, Mike. That's, that's a horrible way to lose. He didn't deserve that. Chris Barnes repeats as rolled the richest champion. 
what a day for Chris Barnes from Flower Mound, Texas. He lives about eight miles from the main event entertainment center here in Louisville, and he's going to have to lug that big check home. Randy, tremendous outing for Barnes today. Defends his title. Yeah, and he started off in great fashion against Walter Ray Williams Jr. He starts with a front five. Walter Ray ran into some carry problems. Chris just mauled him. Thank you, Walter. And then in the championship match, the most lucrative Brooklyn ever thrown in the history of professional bowling. Worth 200 grand right there against Mike Scroggins. That's the luckiest shot I've ever had in my life right there. Along with the Barnes family we've been waiting for, Chris with wife Linda and Ryan Troy, the twins, are joined by Eric Studer from Motel 6 with the Trek presentation. Eric. Well, Chris. On behalf of 850 Motel 6s and 10 of our 10,000 associates across the country, we congratulate you on your second win. And we had uh, six great champions, and uh, as usual, you bowled really, really strong. And congratulations. Can you hang on to the check there with the twins? It's not easy, Chris. A Brooklyn strike to win it. How does that feel? Uh, you know, I feel terrible for Mike. Um, that has got to be the the most horrific shot I've ever thrown <laughs> to, and actually got away with, you know, with something good coming out of it. Uh, you, you know, it's been a crazy ride. A couple of tournaments ago, I wasn't even supposed to be here. Uh, I got another major now and $300,000 and, uh, uh, you know, that belief that everything evens out in the end, I guess, is, uh, is coming around full circle right now. Uh, there's nothing better than winning, winning big money in your hometown and uh, in front of all your friends and having your friends and family around. It's a uh, God, it's a great feeling. Defending is no easy matter. What was it like to get up there with the big money on the line again and facing so much pressure? Well, you know, it's it's tough, and there's no two ways about it. It's uh, it's awfully hard. You put him down. It's okay. <laughs> and, and, uh, he, uh, he, it's still two hundred thousand dollars, and it's monopoly money. It's just more money than we ever thought we'd make in this game, and uh, uh, you can play all the tricks you want and you can do all the things you want but it's still it's nerve-wracking to throw that shot and uh, Mike did a great job and clawed back and got right back in it and uh, you know I just got the luckiest break of all time in the ten in the last shot congratulations Chris thank you Chris Barnes does it again Motel 6 roll to Richard's champ and the Barnes family two hundred thousand dollars richer after just winning the Dexter Tournament of Champions for a hundred thousand that's all from just outside Dallas, Texas. For the entire crew, my partner Andy Peterson, it's Dave Ryan saying so long. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Chris Barnes, Roll the Riches champ again. <laughs>